And the lady yields back, Mr. Issa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Professor Bridges, uh, you're familiar with a great deal of constitutional law. Uh, would you say that the decisions decided uh, by the Supreme Court against President Trump were appropriate uh, in deciding uh, the questions of the uh, election? I'm, uh, I am a constitutional law scholar, um, but I do not do, ex my, my expertise is not in election law. I understand, but you were, uh, you're at UC Berkeley, you're a professor. You did note those decisions, didn't you? Did you uh, think that they were reasoned? Did you have any objections to them? Um, I could speak about um, how I felt about them from a layperson's perspective, but because I'm not a, an election law scholar, I can't speak on the, the well-reasoned nature or not of those decisions. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Ms. Foster, do you find it interesting that everyone seems to have an opinion that the Supreme Court is extreme and biased when it comes to uh, one issue, but it, this would be no exception. They seem, anytime the court seems to rule against uh, what conservatives would like, uh, I hear nothing but that they're well-reasoned and balanced. Uh, do you find that humorous, even, even from your position, not as a, uh, a scholar in that area? It certainly is interesting. As we heard earlier, um, Chuck Schumer stood on the steps of the Supreme Court on March 4th, 2020 and threatened Justices Gorsuch and Kavanaugh, prompting a rare public response from the Chief Justice who called the remarks inappropriate and dangerous. We see these transparent efforts to bully the Supreme Court into issuing opinions that serve certain policy goals rather than interpreting the Constitution. And I believe we should all be raising our sights. We know that too much of life in Washington can feel like political theater. Today need not be that way. We can all care about women here today, and we do, but, but true care must start with the stopping of abortion. Well, and, and to that extent, it is interesting to me that uh, the Associated Press and the University of Chicago found that 65% of Americans said abortion uh, during the second trimester was wrong, and 80% in the third trimester. Uh, it's interesting that more than half of the witnesses and more than half of the people here on this dais have the exact opposite opinion as 80% of Americans, um, including, uh, you know, uh, President Biden, who, uh, unlike the chairman, uh, has expressed skepticism in court packing uh, as a solution. I want to play something for the record here very quickly. should be of an America where abortion is safe and legal, but rare. Did you hear anything today from my, the majority that implied that they agreed with President Clinton on the rare part of abortion? It seems like today the focus is on making abortion legal and ubiquitous, but certainly not rare, and as we all too often see, not safe. We need a court that is concerned with justice. Well, and speaking of justice, uh, and look, I'm from a state where even trying to provide abortion alternatives, even making uh, young pregnant women in need aware of of families who would adopt their child and give them a good home uh, is, is discouraged and somehow sometimes prohibited. So I'm not from a state that is like Texas. But looking at Texas and Florida for a moment, uh, did Texas and Florida, Florida, for example, at 22 weeks, is it consistent with the Roe decision? Is Florida in that part of its, its law looking at viability and setting a number which is certainly viable with today's science? Absolutely. Florida, um, Florida's law re regarding late-term abortions is completely in line with the Constitution, uh, is completely in line with viability and, um, and the limits set by Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey, and it is in line with the, the opinion of the vast majority of Americans, including Democrats and self-described pro-choice Americans. So today we're hearing something that is inconsistent with 80% of Americans. We're hearing testimony except for yours. Uh, that implies extreme by a court that has been well-balanced, and we're hearing that somehow there's, it's extreme 
to set 22 weeks, the point at which babies are regularly born alive and well, is somehow wrong. Isn't that what we're hearing here today? That is what we're hearing. And there is nothing more tragic than abortion killing when a child can already definitively survive. There is no medical basis for killing a child at 22 weeks or later. Absolutely none. And you don't need to be a doctor to make that decision or judgment. You simply need to be a human being. Thank you, Mr. The, Chairman. I rest my case. The uh, gentleman's time has expired. Um, there are a series of floor votes that have, there are a series of votes that have started on the floor. So the committee will be in. You think we can do one more?